Global Fellowship, where I'm your host, I'm Calvin. But tonight we have a very, very special guest joining us tonight. We have Romo Andam, um, who will be teaching us about the COVID situation, how it can help to purify our world. To give you a bit of a background in case, um, in a very small chance that you don't know who Romo Andang is, um, Romo Andang is a graduate from the School of Canon Law at the Catholic University of America. As far as I know, that is the only school of Canon Law in the US that is authorized by the Vatican. He eventually became a PhD in the Canon Law, he is now a lecturer at Scola Tinggi Filsafat Kara, and he is also very active in the ecclesiastical court. That is a court um, having jurisdiction mainly in spiritual or religious matters. And outside of the church, he is an honorary member of Pradi Persatuan Advokat Indonesia in the code of ethics category. He is also really passionate in raising environmental awareness. You might have read about his initiatives in the newspaper somewhere, and the list goes on. So, um, that being said, as always, we're going to start with praise and worship. Then we will continue with uh, Father Andang's teaching. And then you will have chance to ask questions at the end, as we will have Q&A sessions after the teaching. So if you have any questions, please save it up and you will have the opportunity to ask them after the teaching. That being said, um, I'll hand the floor over to praise and worship. Hello, everyone. Welcome to CFJ Bible Fellowship once again. My name is Monique and we will sing a song before we start our session today. So before we can pray first also, and let's start with a sign of cross in the name of the Father and of yes. the Son and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Amen. Good evening, Lord. Thank you for this special night. Thank you for letting Romo Andang to join us and to teach us in this special day. Uh, Lord, we feel very blessed to be able to gather here to learn more about you uh, and through this community. We thank everybody, our faithful father, uh, we want to first thank you for everything that you have provided us, Lord, like from the beginning and especially in this hard situation. Lord, we believe that in every circumstance and any situation in our life, you will always be there for us. Even though maybe we sometimes neglect you, we doubt you, or maybe we even ever leave you. You always know how to make us come back to you, Lord. And maybe through this pandemic that has been happening, you want to purify our hearts once again. You want our heart to be softened, Lord, and to remember you once again. Lord, we know that you will always save us. You will always welcome us and embrace us, Lord, because you are our Savior, our Father, and Jesus, our Savior. Jesus, beautiful Savior, God of all men, Reason King, Lamb of God, holy and righteous, 
was redeemed. Bright morning star and all the heavens shout. All the heavens shout your praise and all creation. All creation love to worship you. And we sing a wonderful, wonderful, how beautiful name above every name. Exalted high, how wonderful. And how beautiful Jesus, your name, the name above every name, we sing Jesus. Mm -hmm. And we we'll lift our voice to you, Lord. You're our Lord God, our protector, our provider, and Jesus our Savior. Jesus, beautiful Savior, God of all men, just be risen King. All the heaven shout your praise and all creation, all creation to worship you. Oh, wonderful, how wonderful, and now you. Name above every name, exalted high, how wonderful, and how beautiful, Jesus, your name, Jesus, your name, name above every name. And I'll sing, I will sing forever. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. And I will sing forever. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. I love you. And I will sing forever to you. I will sing forever. And I will sing forever to you, Lord. Your God. This is our desire, because you're wonderful. How wonderful, how beautiful, name above, name above every name, and it exalts its heart. Wonderful, how beautiful, Jesus, your name, Jesus, name above every name, your mind, Jesus, mm. Jesus, God. 
thank you, Lord, uh, for the time uh, to worship you. Um, it's been very good and that we can feel you once again through our voices, our yearning heart. We've poured everything that we feel to you. And we will start our session today. Please bless Romo Andang, who will teach us today. Uh, please always bless him. Only you can guide him and make everything just goes well. Thank you, Lord. Uh, we thank you once again. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We start now? Yes, please. Okay. Hey, uh, dear friends, um, how are you? And good evening. Um, my name is Andang, uh, Romandang. Uh, well, today is my uh, honor to be with you, and I'm glad to be with you to share uh, some insight in my heart and my mind as well about our faith and our religion. Uh, since a couple months ago, uh, starting I think in the last of March, we have a, the so-called um, kind of lockdown or best baby where uh, pandemic of uh, COVID-19 will happen among us. But actually in my mind, in, uh, in, in my reflection, such a moment uh, during the pandemic, the, uh, the, the pandemic of uh, COVID-19, is a kind of a purification of our life. Not only the purification of our nature, purification of uh, economic life, purification of political life, purification of uh, social and cultural life, but also religious life. I would like to ask you to join in my reflection about our religious life during this pandemic uh, situation or pandemic era. Um, I will start with such, uh, several phenomena I saw such as like this. Now we know that um, almost every religious activities are online. There are mass online, like this Bible study online, but also rosary online, uh, seminar online. But sometimes I heard like this, yes, we are happy because of uh, religious activities, especially masses online, because we could follow two or even three masses every day <laughs> like this. Um, well, that's good. But uh, the feeling after that, hmm, I would like to ask you to reflect because some of them feel that, yes, I feel a bit holier because I attended uh, two masses every day, like this. And also some of them uh, told me that they are getting, uh, f felt getting closer to God. Yes, okay. But sometimes also uh, some expression about the disappointment about God, because they prayed, but God didn't, seems didn't listen our prayer, such as like this. Um, well, I asked God to deliver us from this corona viruses, but still there are or there were many people uh, affected and even died of it. So where is God? 
it seems that God is not so powerful as I thought before. There's another thought about uh, our prayers. But other things like this. Well, um, some religious practices, as I mentioned, it is uh, it, uh, uh, online. But then some people felt that they miss how to pray in the church, missing to receive Holy, Holy Communion, missing to meet other faithful, uh, missing their friends in the church, missing to be active in the church. Well, that's good. But on the other side, I would like to reflect what kind of motivation we are going to the church if we just want to see our friends or being active in the church. Uh, such questions actually normal and very human. However, I would like to ask you to reflect deeper. What is the true meaning of such purification? Well, there are two or three levels of purification. The first one is the true meaning of our faith. Then also about our uh, our God, and the third one is what kind of activities about uh, in the church. I mean religious life, not faith, but religion. I would like to distinguish between faith and religion. Well, those three uh, reflection would based on um, my own experience about what is the true meaning of our Christian life. Well, if you've uh, attended, attended online uh, last Eucharistic, uh, uh, I mean Eucharistic celebration uh, on last Sunday during the birthday of CFJ, and also for uh, the solemnity of the Trinity, I saw you uh, my favorite image. It was a uh, Jesus knock the door, uh, knocking the door. Well, as I mentioned, and and that homily, uh, such image based on the. First, on the Book of Revelation. Book of Revelation, uh, first, uh, no, 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 uh, yeah, chapter 3, verse 20. Well, let us open uh, Revelation, Book of Revelation, chapter 3, start with uh, verses 19 until 22. Once more, Book of Revelation, chapter 3, verses 19 until uh, 22. It is written like this. Those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. So be earnest and depend. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and, and they with me. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne, as I was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. See, I told, told you, uh, I told you that uh, the image I mentioned, Jesus knocking at the door, based on verses twenty. It is written, "Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, 
I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. What does it mean? Actually, this is the, the true faith or the true Christian faith. What I mean by the true faith is that we believe that God is not far away from us. God is just very close and even not only close, but he wants to be with us. He wants to, to enter into our heart, our soul, and it is mentioned here, I will come in and eat with that person, with us, every single of his sons and daughters. He will come in in our hearts. For what? To eat with us. It is kind of celebration. And eating with him is really our uh, hope. And this is the ideal one. So, if God is so close and he's not only caring of us, he loves us, then what we need to do, very simple actually, we just open our heart. But, well, just opening our heart is an easy one because actually we have a lot of ego. We have a lot of uh, interests, our own self-interest. Not only self-interest actually, but mostly physical and psychical interests for ourselves. But actually, God asks us to be with us. God asks us to open our heart. Then, since we are Uh, okay, uh, we are sinful people. Him sinful meaning we just take care of uh, thinking of our interests. This is sinful. Then actually we could not open our heart. That's why God try to rebuke and discipline us, since we are His son and His daughters. Actually, let us see another verses. Uh, let's open Hebrews 12, uh, chapter 12, verses 5 to 11. Once more, Hebrews chapter 12, verses 5 to 11. It is mentioned as well that, uh, like this, and have you completely forgotten this word and of encouragement that addresses you as a father addresses his son? It, is, it says, my son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline and do not lose heart when he rebukes you because the Lord disciplines the one he loves and he testens everyone he accepts as his son. And your hardship as discipline God is treating you as his children for what children are not disciplined by their father. If you are not disciplined and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are not legitimate, not true sons and daughters at all. Moreover, we have all had human fathers who disciplined us and we respected them for it. How much more should we submit to the father of spirits and live? They disciplined us for a little while as they thought best, but God disciplined us for our good in order that we may share in his holiness. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Look, rebukes and discipline as his son and daughters. So actually, once more, since God is so close and he, we could call him father, our own father, then we believe 
and trust our life to Him. And that's why, since He loves us as His own son and daughters, He disciplines us. He rebukes our hearts. For what? To be able to open our heart, which it was a lot of ego, which hinder, hinder us to open our heart for him. So and that's the meaning of purification, the meaning of how we could receive him so that he could enter in our heart to come in and to eat with us. So once more, purification means that we can um, try to, to not to follow our own ego. Well, another side of the story, actually, I would like to say that such phenomenon I mentioned before could be called a kind of spiritual obesity. We know that obesity is not good. Obesity is not how uh, it's not. Uh, I mean, we should um, reject such obesity. So, obesity means that we feel a, a kind of people who feel holier than others. We are better than others. We have a lot of religious activities, but for the sake of activities itself, not for uh, a kind of um, our love for others. And also if we are praying, look at it. What we do during praying, we mostly we ask for ourselves during the COVID, uh, I mean the pandemic situation, we ask God to deliver such burden. It's very hard actually, but if we just, God just hinder us, God help us. And then God says, says nothing, so we are disappointed. This is actually a kind of obesity. Since the pure heart is a heart who, who, uh, which is able to listen to God, to listen his knock in our heart so that we could open our heart. Once more, all, everything in this uh, heavy situation during the pandemic, situation actually a kind of God's uh, effort to purify us, to discipline us, to rebuke us as a beloved son and daughters. I mentioned this is a kind of discipline and um, rebuke because let us think Every um, a test for our life actually enough for us. We could, uh, God knows the best for us. Just think for a while, if this uh, pandemic happened 10 years ago, ago, 10 years ago, yeah? Ten. How, how can we, how could we do? Ten years ago, there was no, uh, no. I mean, um, many online shops, many um, e-commerce. There is no, I mean, grab card. There is no many things. A Zoom like this. Ten years ago, didn't exist yet. How can we bear such situation? But now, well, it is bearable. I think since. God knows his own plan for us. But let us not only 
a stay in the burden or even this is a kind of punishment from god no no once more this is purification not only our religious practices but also about our thought our understanding about god so once more since we could um, say that such pandemic situation is a kind of purification there are three meaning of purification in our religious life first of all this is a kind of purification about our understanding of god look at it some people say that god is uh, but punishes, punishes. No, our God is not God who is slow to anger. No, God as a father is really loving God. He loves us very much. He knows his best because he disciplined us and he rebuked us so that we could be uh, truly his son and daughters who could receive him in their heart. This is about God. God is not far away. God is not only a kind of abracadabra like Aladdin who can help and uh, gives our needs. No, 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 not that God. God is really Father who asks us to be a better person. The second thing about purification about our uh, rituals. As I mentioned that some people um, says that, well, they could attending two or three masses every day, uh, attending rosary online sometimes, a set like that. But also another thing, another person's told me that they miss the uh, Eucharistic prayer, uh, Eucharistic uh, celebration in the church and could not pray at home. Well, actually, this is a kind of purification as well. The true worship, the true praise of God, the true prayer is a personal meeting with God. Well, we need rituals. We need uh, others to pray with us but it is a kind of supporting system only the most important thing is our relationship with God so we are praying alone at home we following mass from home we uh, try to learn that's, that's the most important thing in the rituals and also in the praying is a personal relationship, relationship with God. Other and the congregation, also the situation in the church, the statues, the altar, the songs we sing, actually just kind of supporting system so that we could pray better. That's not the most important one. There are just the uh, kind of instruments so that we could pray better. This is the second uh, purification. The third one is how we could distinguish between the so-called religion and faith. Religion is an organization. We need organization, we need the church, but not for the sake of the church itself. The church exists in the world to help every individual, its members. Its members is much more important than the church itself. But since we as an individual, actually a weak person, weak human being, we need others. We need the help of the church. We need the rituals. We need the, uh, the laws of the church so that we could 
be uh, followers of Christ. This is the purification actually, because um, as I mentioned before, every single trials, every single um, difficulties because of this uh, COVID-19, actually the way God tried to purify us, to discipline us, and to rebuke us so that he could come in in our heart. So dear friends, there's uh, several things I would like to share to you uh, in this moment. Uh, and now since it's uh, uh, 35 minutes already, <laughs> I would like to stop here and we could um, have a question and answer or to share your feeling, to share your opinions and so we can strengthen each other in, uh, as a human being and as, uh, also as a follower of Christ. Okay, thank you, God bless you. All right, thank you very much, um, Father Andang, for the teaching. And as I promised you guys, now I will open the floor for you guys to ask questions. So if you have any questions, um, feel free to unmute yourself and then just ask your question straight away. We'll try to start to share to share your feeling, to share your opinion, to share your experiences. I would like, uh, I would be glad to hear and to listen. And if you need, I could comment it. Please. Oh, this is a question. Um, from FF, <laughs> I don't know who is he, C or he, uh, in the chat box. Can you elaborate more on the role of church to help its members? Okay, well, I would like to um, give you an analogy like this. Um, in my mind, the church is kind of pot of good soil and the members or the individuals is the plants itself. So actually the church try to help the individuals to grow, to grow and to be fruitful. As I mentioned in the uh, Matthew chapter uh, 13 verses 1 to 9 at uh, on first eight, I think it mentioned that we should be fruitful hundred times or sixty times or thirty times. What is, so? What is the meaning of the church? The church is the soil. The church should help the indi individuals to grow. So, the church try to offer how to pray with rituals, how to pray with several uh, models of praying like rosary, like novena, uh, also sacrament, sacraments, and the sacraments. And also the church helps with the laws and also the, um, the priests and the bishops to help you, to serve you. So actually, you live not for the church, but the church for you. But then this is uh, a kind of mutual relationships because uh, you could help the church better to serve others by your service as well. So, but the most important thing in this uh, dynamics is 
every individual on the faithful, on the members of the church. Okay, that's my question, uh, my answer. If you have more questions, okay. Um, um, this is uh, com your comment. I find it interesting to hear that the member is more important than the church itself. Yes, sure. But, okay, this is a kind, uh, I could say that this is a new opinion or relatively new opinion because in the past, in the past, the church should be a greater. So we live for the church. We live for religion. No. No. Not anymore. Look at it. If we are kind of being proud because the church has many members, we proud that a uh, uh, celebrity becoming a Catholic, then we are proud of it. Look at it. This is a spiritual obesity. This is not for ourselves, but actually for our own ego. Well, once more, we, we as the Catholics just not like this anymore. And you should learn if you, and, uh, you are interested, you should read the meaning of the church in the, the so-called document, the so-called Lumen Gentium in uh, Vatican Council, the second Vatican Council documents. Thank you. Other question, this one, Ditya. Um, I would like to ask your opinion on the church starting mass again. When do you think is the best time to start mass again? Do we have to wait until we have zero COVID case? Well, well, um, no. <laughs> I, I think that uh, zero COVID cases mm, is. Um, I don't think that this is uh, in the two, three months. Uh, in the future, three months. But if we wait until we have zero COVID cases is very heavy as well. So I think uh, most probably uh, next month or next two months, next month it's okay, but we should be more, uh, yeah, being alert, but also try to, to take care of our own selves so that we have a kind of discipline and also some protocols to, to do and to follow. And I think we could hinder such a, a kind of, what the so-called uh, penularan in English. Okay. Okay, Edith Emeralda. Can you elaborate more about the causes and dangers of spiritual obesity and how we can take care of it? Okay, uh, let me tell you once more what this spiritual obesity. As we know that obesity is, um, well, we have something too much about uh, something which is not so important. Like if we are obesity in our body, it is because of the the samtan, right? <laughs> but uh, spiritual obesity means that we felt or we feel that we are, I mean, we are holier and we are closer to God, but actually no. Like I mentioned before, Yes, because we serve God and the church become becoming a great 
our parents have a lot of members, then we are proud of it. And sometimes we felt that we are holier than others. Then we could say that others are sinful. Or even further, we could say that others will not go to heaven, only us. That's obesity. Because every human being has uh, the so-called egocentric tendency. Uh, uh, tend to be selfish, tend to be egocentric. That's the, the cause of it. So we could not hear, we could not listen God's knock in our heart. And it's very heavy to follow him because Jesus as the way to the Father has uh, given us example, which is try not to be egocentric with his um, sacrifice. So, uh, what's the danger of spiritual obesity? Yes, we could not listen to God's knock in our hearts, and we just hear or listen our own interests. This is spiritual obesity. Okay, again. You mentioned about how a pure heart is stepped away from our ego and pride. Is there any advice you can give to us so that we may be able to be more humble and be sensitive to hear Jesus knocking in our hearts? Yes. Actually, praying. The true prayer is listening God. Uh, once I think in the Bible study in the CFG a couple years ago, I mentioned what is the true prayers. The true prayers is listening and opening our heart. Let us see or reflect our, what we are doing in our prayer. Mostly we are just asking, asking and asking God what we need. But sometimes not only we, what we need, but we want. But the true prayer is like this state. What is the state? See, once more, when Jesus was in the Gethsemane, what did he said to the what did he say to the Father? Father, if like this. Father, if you, if you, uh, actually, I want that such chalice and uh, the suffering, the, my sufferings will not happen to me. But it is not my will, but your will. Look at it. But your will. This is the true prayer. But in many occasions or even every day, we only asking God, ask for what we want and what we need. So try to pray in silence. Try to pray by uh, being um, uh, thankful to God with, uh, because we receive a lot from Him. By thankful to God, then we could see his existence. But let us see as well that in the, um, let me show you what is the true prayer or the true, um, the true, okay, wait, 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 I mentioned in, ah, on Tim's uh, chapter one, Verses 27, it is mentioned like this. Or to 26 to 27. Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves and their religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accept as pure and faultless is this to look after orphans and widows in their distress 
and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Look at it, pure and faultless of worship or religion. Why it is mentioned that we should look after orphans and widows in their distress? Because even in that such sufferings of others, others who have suffered, we will seek God's love and we are called to love them. As mentioned in the Bible, where there is love, there is God. So please try to listen to him. Try to hear his voice. As I mentioned uh, in the Revelation chapter 3, uh, verses 22, Wherefore has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Let them hear. So praying is listening. Praying is hearing God, not only asking, not only praising, but also, uh, especially listening to God. That's uh, about uh, how to listen to God and open our heart. Okay, and the else, oh wait, wait. Why I, I miss the boxes? Oh. Oh, sorry, how can? Oh, sorry. Uh, look at it. And the else, okay. Mm, from Giovanni. I want to ask more about Hebrews 12, about the Lord can correct and punish us. But is that God we all know is the one is full of love and never punish? Okay, Hebrews 12, how to punish actually? Punish as a father. Punish to make us more disciplined, not punishment of a kind of the police to the people. No, punish as to correct so that we could uh, his really his son and daughters. Yes, truly that God we know is full of love. Full of love. So this is a loving punishment, not a kind because of anger, but uh, really uh, out of love. It is in my, my experience, yeah? Okay, again, just out of curiosity, um, Chris Salim, just out of curiosity, how would you compare, contrast this pandemic with the plague of Egypt from the book of Exodus of Warren? When you talk about purification, I instantly thought of it. Well, on the plague of Egypt, as I remember, I, um, Sorry, I didn't read it uh, right now, but the plague of Egypt was in the uh, Old Testament. At that time, a lot of uh, a kind of plague or sickness or even uh, disability, of, disability of people uh, it's a kind of punishment of God. Because at that time, God was understood as a God who, uh, who is uh, easily, anger, uh, easily, ang easily angry and God who just uh, uh, punish who, who are Miss, uh, who have a mystic and give a kind of gift to those who are good, something like that. But now we have a different understanding of God because of Jesus who uh, taught us that God is not like that, but God is full of love. God is so close and God is really our father. That's a different ang uh, angle about the plague. Other else, 
uh, is the down here. Uh, and the question is like this, what approach can we take to encourage our friends and families to get through the process of purification with an open heart and to rely on Jesus even more despite the distance of difficulties to live our normal life during this pandemic? Yes, uh, well, it is uneasy, and, but we try to see that uh, as mentioned that God is really our father and father means a good father not only giving us what is um, enjoyable what is something uh, we, uh, we want but really God who always discipline us to be better and better if we have a good understanding of God as Jesus taught us, as that he is really a good father, not only uh, a businessman, not only a police, not only, uh, um, well, something else. Then I think and I feel we can manage our feeling that during such heavy situation, we just try to surrender to him and be full of hope that someday we we are not just delivered from such heavy situation but we learn a lot from such uh, pandemic covid uh, pandemic covid 19 this is my opinion okay other else i think i'm uh, i read the those question already well any others who want to share your experiences or feelings or even your opinions please hello <laughs> Any other uh, final take on wanting to ask questions to Founder Andang while he's here? If not, um, I want to be appreciative of your time, Father Andang. I don't want to um, hold you way too long in this fellowship, but we do really appreciate you being here, and I hope um, to see you in many more times in Bible Fellowship. Uh, that being said, uh, would you mind to lead us in a closing prayer? Okay, yes, and we are, let us uh, pray and ask God's blessing so that we could become a blessing for our family and also for our friends and for the world. In the name of the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. God our Father, we are thankful because of your grace and uh, you give us through what we met in our daily life, though we just stay at home, but we believe that what we experience in our family, in our life, really expressing your love and uh, the, uh, truly your love itself, which will strengthen us to be a better person and also better better son and daughter of yours is yourself so dear god please always knock our heart please open our heart so that we could listen uh, your voice and understand your will and please strengthen us as well so that we could follow you and try to do your will in our life so that we could really be fruitful in our life. For this, now I would like to ask you for your uh, guidance as well so that our life really following your will in our family and also in our jobs. 
tonight we will uh, have a rest. So please uh, help us to to have a good rest so that we could um, continue our life tomorrow in following you and being fruitful for the world. And for this, we ask you your blessing so that we could have a strength to be a blessing for our family and for the world. The Lord be with you and also with you. May Almighty God always bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Father Andang, once again for being with us. Um, have a lovely 